Hello, welcome to the International Girls in ICT Day 2023 with the theme Digital Skills for Life. And this is put together by eBusiness Live magazine. We're here with the students, students from all over the country, cut across um, different states, and uh, it promises to be an exciting time. Stay with us. encouraging because it teaches us more about digital techniques and other stuff. Okay, the most unique thing I'll be going home with is that well ICT can help us in most of the job perspective that are here so that's what I'll be going home with today. This is my very first time attending this program and I find it interesting because I didn't really have interest in computer before until my sister introduced it to me now i'm having to learn a lot of things today having to go to the internet to post things that i love to do on the internet for other people to have interest in it this has been very very nice it's a very nice program like for people to just come together to organize a program that helps empower girls change their mentality inform them that ict is not just this stereotyped biased career it's very nice and educative okay, my takeaway from here today is that i can be anything that i want not even particularly in ict i'm ict anything anything at all and ict is not just for only the opposite gender it's for everyone it's open for everyone okay, so how old are you i'm 15. are you on, are you on instagram uh no sir are you on facebook no are you on twitter no i'm on tiktok tiktok yes nice talking to you thank you sir well, this is a very you know, um, informative program. I mean, it's inspiring, motivating to see different women in ICT that you know are making waves in the world. Uh, you know, breaking the bars, pushing their limits, and you know, encouraging other people to even follow in their footsteps too. And um, it's generally informative, educative. It's a very nice program. It enlarges your horizon. It teaches you that okay, it's not just this normal stereotype kind of thing. It's bigger and larger than what we've been made to understand that it is. It's not just a middle dominated st sector you can also go there and make your own positive impact there well naturally i took up tech as a, as an hobby in the first place but after some time i began to realize i can actually turn this in, monetize it you know turn it into an a profession so i said okay um alongside my normal you know medicine job i can also try to take this one as you know as a side work and everything you know and just expose me more to the world out there how old are you? I'm 13. Are you on Instagram? No. On Facebook? No. Twitter? No. YouTube? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, this event is one of the things that would make a would make a great impact on getting girls involved in the digital um, ecosystem. Since the world is now going, like I mentioned earlier in my presentation, the world is now a digital platform. Everybody has to have some sort of digital skill or the other. So um, parents have to encourage it because whether they like it or not, whatever area of work or life they want their kids involved in would have to do with tech one way or the other considering the fact that these girls are up and coming in the next five years we already have situations of doctors performing surgery using robots so whatever um, line of work you want your kids to go to at some point in time tech is going to be involved and it's time is better for them to get involved now so that they don't lose out or feel left behind years to come. And through programs like this, mentorship programs where people in the field can come in and talk about their experience would open the eyes of a lot of people. And I think the school also needs to involve the parents actively to encourage their children in the data tech, digital space, technology space as well. Everybody is involved from the accountants to the marketer to the uh, communications expert. Everybody is involved in the tech system and 
programs like this continuous mentorship and the support of the parents will go a long way to ensure that uh, we get more girls in the space most times i think what most people have been doing right now is to give more opportunities to girls uh, some people might say it was an unfair advantage but once you make an environment um, welcoming to girls you see more of them involved in it and from what we've seen so far these girls are smart they're intelligent they are well outspoken but the thing is the encouragement is not there and i'll refer back yeah the government can do so much but it all starts from the home as well what they see around them and the government can also support support more tech innovations and yeah we need regulation in anything but they need to be relaxed a bit and let the creative influences let the creativity flow through especially with our government institutions or government uh, schools so you need to let them uh, i've seen government schools with a uh, ICT labs that are not used. They have computer labs that are not used. They only teach them, oh, this is how you put on the computer, this is how you do this, but nothing beyond that. And I think from that, from government schools, maybe they need to do a once a month expat that will come in to take the students on the various uh, aspects of computer science. This will pick the children's interest, that the children are always curious, will pick their interest, and from there we can build up a technology nation from there. I'm Obala Johnson, the former Minister of ICT is also someone uh, uh, I look up to as well. She has done a lot in the tech space. I have a friend, uh, she's the uh, founder of Money Africa. So what she does is teach people financial uh, skills, especially young people, financial skills. She, she has an edu, edu tech uh, platform where she does that and is one, one of the people I also admire. I also know of a lady that does um, tech law, so she's a lawyer for tech startups. So if you want to do a startup, she's the best person to call. Um, I think her name is Muduk, but I don't remember her surname now. But when people want to start law, start up, do a startup, you need a lawyer. She's the tech law, so I expect this is mostly tech law. So different aspects, so not everybody is a technical, core technical person. There are other people in the technical space that are still doing great things as well. I'm so grateful to God, not just for the fact of today, but for what this campaign is actually doing in the lives of our young girls. I have testimonies of girls who have decided to take careers in ICT because of this thing that started small. I just want to give God all the glory, it's been awesome. Yes. As a journalist, I'm not a tech person. I actually have a BSc and NSC in economics. But I discovered that every time I went for any event, ICT events, you have mostly men and just a few women, particularly to speak or to discuss issues in the industry. And I began to wonder why is it so? And then interestingly, I stumbled on the fact that even the International Telecommunications Union was concerned. So it means it was not a personal thing for me, rather a global thing. And so they began this uh, initiative, a campaign to uh, encourage young girls to take up careers in ICT. And I decided to latch on it and to begin to do that same campaign in Nigeria, which we started in 2012. And since then, it's been growing and growing and growing. And there are testimonies of girls who have actually begun. Many of them are outside the country now studying courses in technology and I just am grateful to God for it. Well, I would say they have tried a lot, a lot, especially some of them have been very consistent, particularly the industry regulator. There's never been a year that they didn't support me. Every time NCC is there, once you talk about the girl child, they are there to support and to encourage. Even today they've been here, they've spoken to these girls, MTN has been there, Glow has been there. So the industry has been quite supportive. Presently in Nigeria, in our industry workforce, only 22% is for women. We have the other men. I mean, that's not good. So we're trying to see, there's like the, the UN Secretary General said, actually encouraging the woman to, women to take up something in, in ICT is an unfinished business. And we're actually working on that business. We're hoping that in the next three to five years, we should be able to lift up in Nigeria here from 20% workforce of women to 40%. And uh, we believe that gradually we'll come to realize that ICT is not a boy thing. It's for everybody. Yeah, like I also said in my speech earlier this morning, you see, if you are trying to do something, say for a woman, who best to do it than a woman herself? Because she understands it. For instance, a woman wants to give birth. You say you want to develop a software that will help a woman in giving birth. Who best to design that software? It's the woman who has gone through the labor pain and understand what it is like. But if you tell it, a man can design, but they will not understand what actually they are designing. So we need our women. And you know, we have the soft touch.
So we need women to bring in the soft touch, which should help the industry to grow better. So I think it's, it's a general thing because I've come to realize, working with a few schools, that many of these schools, they just do what we call theory. And I think that's what is the bane of education in Nigeria. You know, what happens most times is that our people, we are more theoretical than practical. You go to most of these schools, they have the systems, but they don't even want the children to touch them as if when they touch the thing, it will get spot. Allow them to spoil it and, and then repair it again. That way they are learning. Most of our schools, we are not really going by where, where the world is today. We are very far, very, very far. Because what our children, our children are intelligent. If we give them this thing, we'll be surprised what they can do. But we are so scared, ah, they will spoil it too, ah, we will replace it and all that. So most schools, and then our curriculum is also not helping matters. We say we are doing computer science in exam. What kind of computer science? It's just read and come and pour it in and go away. But the hands-on is not there. And that's where we need to really work on. We need to work on the hands-on. If government can, instead of just talking, actually do that which they say, I think it will be better for us. Let's work on our curriculum. Give us something that is hands-on. Theory is not helping us. We need to think. I like to say this. There's a story of Bill Gates when he was young, that he was somewhere and the mother was calling him Bill. Bill, there was no answer. And the mother was like, ah, why are you not answering me? And he's like, hey, mommy, don't you know I was, I'm thinking? If it's me, I will slap his face. That's the Nigerian parent. But you see, we don't think. Thinking is a very difficult task. If we can think, we will come up with so much. If we look at our, many of our first class students, you talk with them, they would have forgotten what they, because many of them they just cram and pour back to the teacher. And the teachers are happy to get you, give them exactly what they have given you. We should allow our children to think. Let's instill that culture of thinking right from when they are young in the home. Things will be better for us. We will do better. All right, so we've been here talking to the organizer of the Girls in ICT and the publisher of eBusiness Life magazine, Mrs. Ufoma Dairo. She's a pioneer, and we are here with lots of students from across the nation. From the venue of this year's International Girls in ICT Day 2023, I'm Don Pedro Agambi, and I'm signing out. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Keep watching Tech TV, you know, it's very inspiring. So, once you keep watching, you're going to get the latest and most up to date information on technology and everything that is about.